Millennials are America's future and often its favorite punchline. People say we're young, but the oldest millennials are nearing 40. People say we're dumb, but we're the most educated generation ever. And people say we're spoiled, but we're the first generation in American history who will be worse off financially than our parents. We're traveling across the country to find out how young Americans are surviving, and in some cases thriving. I'm Brad Hunt, and this is American Paycheck. Locals love to call Montana the last best place. And when you see the picturesque landscapes, from the Rocky Mountains to the Great Plains, it's hard to argue with them. For five years running, Montana has had the nation's highest startup activity per capita. Here in Bozeman, home to Montana State University, the tech boom allows students to find high-paying engineering jobs without having to move to the coasts. While I was in school, I thought for sure I'd have to move away and find a job elsewhere. And by the time I had graduated, I was able to get some jobs around here. And it seems like every week there's a new tech company in Bozeman. And it's pretty exciting to be here in the Valley and be a part of that. Bozeman's tech boom has really influenced the state. It's really allowed us as Bozeman and Bozeman residents to get out there, get good high paying jobs, and to really do well on not only a local standard, but a national standard. Montana native Ben Keeley is the engineering manager for Ascent Vision Technologies, an aerospace company specializing in military operated anti-drone technology. Ascent Vision Technologies provides camera systems to a wide variety of manned aircraft, unmanned aircraft, and the Department of Defense and military customers. We typically don't have a hard time finding engineers. We have Montana State, which is a state-of-the-art engineering school they enjoy all of the outdoor activities, the camping, the skiing, the hiking, everything that they can. And that really just brings such a different mentality and personality to the area. Our x Mattis is our expeditionary mobile air defense integrated system that is used to detect, identify, and mitigate aerial threats. In July of 2019, after multiple calls to stand down, the x Mattis was used to mitigate a threatening Iranian drone. It's incredibly humbling that technology made by people in Bozeman is making a change on the world stage. While Ascent makes a name for itself defending us internationally, its sister company takes care of a different kind of defense here at home. Fires are popping up across Montana. The terrain makes it difficult to get engines, water tenders, and other equipment near the blaze. Wildfires are worsening, and they have been for decades, resulting in the loss of almost 20,000 American homes in 2018 alone. Purple Heart Navy SEAL Tim Sheehy founded Bridger Aerospace to combat this problem. I was a Navy SEAL officer. Uh, for about 10 years. And during that time, we used aerial surveillance uh, to great effect overseas in counterterrorism and counterinsurgency operations. In particular, one mission, which was a hostage rescue operation, we were using several experimental aerial surveillance assets to try and pinpoint the location of where the hostage was held. So my vision was to create a user-friendly, low-cost aerial surveillance capability that could be applied to missions other than combat operations such as wildfire fighting, public safety, border security, and search and rescue. And I said to myself, if I ever get out of the military, maybe I'll start a company to focus on that. And lo and behold, a couple years later, I, I was wounded and uh, medically separated. The transition out was uh, a challenge, as anybody will say, because when you're in the military, especially part of an elite group, your life really is built around that mission. And that defines you, it defines what you do every day. And to lose that clear definition can be challenging for some. But for me, starting a business, uh, and especially in a critical area, that provided that mission. That gave me that new drive to achieve and focus. And uh, the rest is history. We started with two guys in my barn, and no one really got paid for about two years. And Bridger's first money was actually f surveying for lost cattle off cattle ranches here in Montana. That didn't pay for itself, but it was better than nothing. And in that time we started to get acquainted with the local forestry offices and they realized the aircraft we had sitting right behind us there and the infrared camera we we're using could be utilized for aerial firefighting applications they said that's a good plane and we like your capability to do infrared mapping could you fly fires for us we're one of the largest aerial firefighting operators in the u.s now we operate over from florida to alaska half the company's employees are msu grads like ben the other half veterans like tim all of our founders and early employees were veterans additionally the type of work we do lends itself to the veteran community, and that is rapid deployment, uh, no-fail missions, 
high safety, high performance requirements. When you're looking at, for an aviation uh, professional in the firefighting realm, you're really dealing with a different breed. Uh, veterans are perfect. And in aviation, you have the critical phases of flight, which are the, the pucker moments, the sweaty hands, the, the, the stressful part. Most aviation professionals, particularly airline folks, are in that critical phase of flight for seconds or minutes a day. Flying at treetop level over mountains that are on fire uh, for hours and hours a day, our pilots and, and aircraft are essentially always in the critical phase of flight. Tim and his wife, who also served, rarely saw each other while deployed. Upon returning to civilian life, they needed a place to call home, and Montana beckoned. My wife and I decided that if we ever got out of the military, we were gonna move to the Mountain West. After I was injured, we decided on Bozeman for a number of reasons. Number one, it's a great place to raise a family wonderful quality of life. It's a very fertile startup community here, so a lot of other companies that we can work with and alongside. So it made a lot of sense for us to, to set up our life here and the lifestyle we like to lead. You know, I live 10 minutes from the office, but I have a 40-acre horse ranch and, you know, I can live the rural lifestyle but still be able to run a, a, a decent-sized tech company. We're here at the Nine Quarter Circle Ranch outside of Big Sky, Montana. Cameron and Sally Kelsey run the Nine Quarter Circle Ranch, which has offered tourists a taste of the cowboy lifestyle for the past 75 years. A couple years ago, Cameron took me on a date um, to really woo me, I think, as he was heading into his busy season. And he took me flying over Yellowstone National Park, and it was probably the date that sealed the deal. We've been in this valley for almost 75 years now, starting with my grandpa and, and then my dad and now me. And even as a young child, I was always kind of eyeing the ranch and wanting to come back and, and be a dude rancher. And, you know, I guess going away to school was kind of really what cemented it. This is a place that I want to call home and I really enjoy living out here and being in nature and, and riding horses and entertaining guests. And, and so I've always had that, that ambition to do that. Winter in Montana is frigid with temperatures sinking 50 degrees below zero, meaning the Kelsey's business season must fall between mid-June and mid-September. We make essentially all of our money in the uh, summer season, and then we have to budget that throughout the year so that we can uh, you know, continue on. And so you gotta plan as much as you can and uh, try, to, try to make sure that the, the finances make sense. And I think a lot of folks, because we have a 15-week guest season here, they, they assume that we work 15 weeks out of the year and then the rest of the year we have off. And I wish that were true, but that's not. There's a lot of other things to take care of. And one of the things that I would say is surprising, though, about being a dude rancher is how many hats Cameron in particular has to wear. He's a, a plumber, an electrician, a, an entertainer, a horseman, a snowplower. There's a lot of components to keeping a place like this going year round. While Cameron and Sally live on the ranch year round, most of their employees are seasonal and come from out of state. I have always thought it would be really cool to come work on a ranch like this. And just being from North Carolina, we don't really have that kind of a thing. And I didn't realize that it was something that you could actually go work at until I Googled it one day. I was like, oh, cool. All right, I'm yeah, going to you? Montana. I graduated college two years ago. I just kind of Googled dude ranches in America and um, Nine Quarter Circle popped up. And I applied and here I am. Uh, I did construction for a pretty decent sized company. And then, uh, I don't know. Just wanted to move, so applied here and took off. I think it's definitely cheaper living out here and working on this ranch just because um, your board and like food is included, so I don't pay rent and I don't have to really worry about feeding myself, which is awesome. Um, so I have been able to save some money. I'm making less but saving more working out here just because we spend most of our time on the ranch. This is our winter pasture down here. We keep our horses actually here longer than we do at the ranch. They uh, are down here from basically October to April, May, and then we bring them back up to the ranch uh, for the summer season. So this is just lower elevation, uh, you know, uh, milder climate down here for them during the winter time. We have a couple different pastures here. We rotate them around uh, and they graze on the land and we just make sure that they're doing good and have water and salt and all the things that they need. In the off season, once the guests leave, um, you know, it's a lot of maintenance and, and maintaining the horses. 
uh, you know, any sort of chores and things that we can do. We do a lot of marketing and advertising for the ranch, promoting it, uh, reservations, hiring of staff, try to rebuild or remodel cabins or update, you know, infrastructure around the ranch. Just kind of any and all things that relate to the business that we can't do in the summer season when we're busy. Living that lifestyle, you know, year round is, is awesome. It's the reason I'm here. It's uh, not just a week long vacation, it's my life. And you get to work outside and work with animals and you know, kind of be your own boss and, and do what you want to do. Some days it's raining and snowing and blowing and you still got to get the job done and so you just got to saddle up and do it. In a place like Montana, people are used to a certain way of life. If you live off a herd of a thousand cattle, it's not if you feel like getting up and going out and taking care of in the middle of January in a snowstorm. That's your livelihood. So it's, it's do or die, really. You need to do your job right. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to have food on the table. Whether you're in the Taylor Fork Valley or any of the other trailheads in the area, it's a special place. This place is, is important and special to me, and I like holding on to that and keeping it going. Montana is a land of old traditions and new innovations. Right now, these seemingly contradictory ideas exist together in harmony. Will this synergy last forever? Only time will tell. But for now, all that matters is tomorrow's paycheck.